a warm welcome to all the directive education viewers in this video i am going to derive the expressions for short circuited and open circuited impedances of a transmission line okay now we know that the basic transmission line equations in terms of source parameters are v is equals to vs cos h gamma x minus is z naught sin h gamma x and what is i is is cos h gamma x minus vs by z naught into sin h gamma x okay now we need to determine the zsc and zoc now what are these equations v and i if you observe the schematic diagram of a transmission line you can easily understand you can easily visualize these equations now this is the schematic diagram of a transmission line and uh, here the voltage between these two points is since these two are corresponding to the source terminals this voltage corresponds to source voltage vs and this current is is okay now let us take any point arbitrary point on the length of the transmission line as p and let me say its distance is x units from the input terminals or source terminals okay so at this point p knowing vs and is these are the two equations to determine v and i at any arbitrary point p on the transmission line now if i know vs and is okay then if i am introducing a short circuit and an open circuit at point p so at this uh, point p if a short circuit is introduced what is the impedance across these two points that that uh, impedance we call it as short circuited impedance that means what i am saying is say simply put a short here so when i am introducing a short between p and this uh, p, the, the, across the point p and the other end then by putting a short then what is the impedance across this point p that will that we call it as short circuited impedance now what is mean by open circuited impedance if i am if i am opening the uh, if i am opening the transmission line at point p if i am opening the transmission line at point p and after opening the terminals of the transmission line at point p what is the impedance that is seen across these two points that impedance i call it as the open circuited impedance so if you observe what is the condition for short circuited impedance always for a short circuit voltage is zero so if i am for short circuit for short circuit v is equals to zero now let us call this as equation number 1 and equation number 2 okay so for short circuit always voltage is zero why because for open circuit since there won't be any flow of current the if, for example if you take this, this example if the, there is an there is a open circuit between these two points so if you observe uh, the current is come to point p and since there is no path between these two points the same current go, go back to the input terminals so there is no continuity in the loop so the net current is zero for a open circuit so the obviously there is no voltage for a short circuit so for a short circuit v is equals to zero implies from equation 1 from equation 1 what can be followed zero is equals to vs cos h gamma x minus is z not sin h gamma x okay now or else vs cos h gamma x is equals to is z not sin h gamma x and from this what is z sc that is the short circuited impedance impedance is always the ratio of current to sorry voltage to current so vs by is and that is equals to z not sin h gamma x divided by cos h gamma x and that is z not tan h gamma x okay therefore zsc is z not tan h gamma x okay so this is the equation to determine the 
short circuited impedance zsc now let us derive an expression for determining the open circuited impedance zoc okay so zoc is what it is the open circuited impedance across the point p and p dash when the when the transmission is open at p okay now when it is when the the, when the transmission line is opened at P, obviously the parameter which is going to become 0 is the current. So, I can write for open circuit, for open circuit which is 0, the current parameter is 0. So, that is I is equals to 0. So, for I is equals to 0, which is the equation I need to substitute, I need to substitute in equation number 2. So, from equation 2, what can I get from equation 2? I can say that 0 is equals to Is cos H gamma X minus v, Vs by Z naught into sin H gamma X. Okay. Now, if I want, if I go for further simplification, Vs by Z naught into sin H gamma X is equals to Is cos H gamma X. Okay. Now, I want the ratio of Vs to Is for getting ZOC. So, from this, what is ZOC? ZOC is Vs by Is. So, what I do is, this Z0, I will throw it into the RHS. So, it is getting divided in the LHS. When it is transposed to RHS, it is getting multiplied. So, it will be nothing but Z0 into the cos term already is there here, cos H gamma X and since the sin h gamma x is on the LHS, if it is transferred to RHS, it goes into the denominator as by sin h gamma x. Now, what is cos by sin? Obviously, it is cot. So, it is z naught into cot h gamma x. So, what is the equation now? ZOC is z naught tan h gamma x and ZOC is cot ZOC is Z0 into cot H gamma X. Now, if you observe, if I multiply ZSC and ZOC, what do I get? ZSC into ZOC simply will give us Z0 square. Why it should give Z0 square? Because tan H gamma X and cot H gamma X are reciprocals to each other and so they get cancelled. So, you will be remaining with Z0 square. If I let us call this equation number 1. Now, from equation number 1, what can I say? ZSC, Z0 and ZOC are in geometric progression or I can as well say that Z0 is the geometric mean between ZSC and ZOC. So that is the statement if you want to write Z0 is the geometric mean between ZSC and ZOC. Okay. So, he may ask you in the examination to prove that the geometric mean between ZSC and ZOC is Z0. Okay. So, how to prove it? Take the basic equations, basic equations in terms of source parameters, apply the open circuit condition, apply the short circuit condition. So, applying open circuit condition, you will be proving that Z0, ZOC is equals to Z0 cot H gamma X and applying the short circuit condition, prove that ZSC is equals to Z0 tan H gamma X and just multiply these two, you are going to get the equation ZSC into ZOC is equals to Z0 square. And once you prove that this equation, you can easily say that Z0 is the geometric mean between the short circuited impedance and the open circuited impedance. Okay. So, in this way, this, is, this small uh, topic is useful for us to determine the short circuited impedance and open circuited impedance. Apart from that, we can as well determine the unknown uh, secondary constants of the transmission line like uh, gamma and Z0. Why? Because from this equation, I can get Z0. Okay. And now how to get uh, gamma, I'll tell you. So, how to get gamma from these equations is, so ZSC by ZOC will give us what? It will give us, so ZSC is Z0 tan H gamma L and ZOC is Z0 cot H gamma L. Now, cot H gamma L, I can as well write it as 1 by tan H gamma L. So, it is Z0 by tan H gamma L. Okay. 
and z0 and z0 gets cancelled. So this 1 by tan h comma l in the denominator, if it is going to upward, uh, it going to numerator, it is going to become tan h square gamma l. Or I can say that tan h gamma l is equals to under root of zsc by zoc. Okay, and this zsc and zoc both are complex numbers. So obviously the ratio of a complex number, two complex numbers is once again a complex number. The under root of a complex number is once again a complex number. So you have got tan h gamma l is equals to some complex number here. So let us call it as some a plus ib. Okay, and what is tan h gamma l? e power gamma l minus e power minus gamma l by e power gamma l plus e power gamma l with a minus is equals to a plus i b by 1. So for this equation if I apply componendo dividendo rule I can get the value of gamma. So in this way we can get from the equation number 1 we can get z0 and from this let, let us call this as equation number 2. So using equation number 2 I can solve for the unknown value of gamma. So once you got gamma and z0 I can determine the primary constants R, L, C and G. So in total given the frequency, given the open circuited and short circuited impedances of the transmission line, I can determine the secondary constant Z0 and gamma by these equations and the unknown primary constants R, L, C and G. So in the next video, we are going to do one numerical based on this concept. Thank you for watching. If you feel that our video is informative please try to subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching